Hi everybody, Be Your Real Gamer back here, and we're going to talk a little bit about building um, a Steam box or a Steam machine. Excuse me. Um, Donnie, you you read it. You actually just wrote something up about the Steam boxes. What was the biggest thing you noticed about the Steam boxes? Yeah, so basically at CES they announced um, Valve and partners announced about thirteen uh, new models that will re all releasing sometime this year, uh, and um, Basically, like, there's a lot of variation in hardware. Um, I noticed some machines are better than others, some are priced better than others, but all in all, I was a little underwhelmed with the options they had available. Um, just because um, there were a couple of boxes that start around $500, um, but mostly everything was, you know, much more expensive than that. And I know the, the whole premise of the Steam Machine is to kind of bring people over from, like, consoles to, to PCs. Because, I mean, honestly, if somebody wants to have a really, you know, enthusiast-level PC, they probably know a little bit more about this stuff and are probably or willing to build one the themselves. Or be looking into it, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're looking to buy a pre-built system that's for your living room, um, I don't know if you want to be spending 1000 1500 I mean, there were Steam boxes that were up to like six thousand dollars, and while I like the option, I just didn't see enough options in you know the more budget. Area. I mean, my biggest problem with it was there was a lot of systems that were over nine hundred dollars, you know, in the twelve, fifteen, to even the Falcon Northwest had a system that could go up to six grand, which you know was kind of just the click on. No, the Falcon, Fal that was the yeah, that was the Falcon Northwest, the the, uh, the Tiki. <laughs> I just uh, I couldn't see giving that much money on a computer that doesn't run Windows. I and a lot of these looked like they were literally just in the case of Digital Storms PC, it looked like it was a regular desktop computer with run, running Steam OS, which you know. Well, yeah, I mean, in the case of um, I think Origin, um, Origin PC, um, Falcon Northwest, and Digital Storm, they all just took some of their and even like. Some other ones too, but they all just took their, um, you know, uh, mini ITX current builds and just slapped SteamOS in them and you know called oh, it another dang. box. Um, you know, the only ones I really I saw a couple that literally you can see they were purpose built to be a Steam box with you know custom cases and those the only two I really saw like that that were appealing was the one from CyberPower PC and the one from iBuyPower, which I never thought in a million years I would be saying that. Funny, right? You know, because they were like five hundred dollars and up, but and they were purpose built to be in the living room. You know, small form factor. The i buy power is actually a very attractive uh, looking case. Looks somewhere in between a PS4 and an Xbox One as far as styling. So, I think around the size of the PS4 as far as size, but. Um, I mean, it it'll fit next. It'll fit you know on top of your DVD player. You know, on mm -hmm. your entertainment center. That's, yeah. that's the key. It won't but, look really out of place. You know, all of those things, they're not they are not out now. And um, even when they are out, maybe they won't have the options you want at your price. Um, and maybe you are willing to build something yourself. Um, so, you know, today we're going to be doing a build that is specifically a Steam box. It'll be running Steam OS. Um, if you want to buy Windows and, and put that in there, you can, but that's not included in the actual price. Um we're uh, setting a budget for ourselves of around six hundred dollars, um, which we think is is a reasonable amount to pay um, for something like this. And yeah, our our goal is to basically get something that's going to be at or better the performance of you know the consoles, but you know, but the wonderful uh, glory uh, glory that is uh, Steam OS and. I, I mean, messy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, Steam OS. Yes, yes. That. Yeah. that nothing. Nothing. Uh, yeah. So, uh, one key thing is, if you were looking to build a regular desktop gaming PC today, or tomorrow, I don't know why I said today, um, you can find more performance and more bang for your buck if you didn't go this way. Part of the reason why this build cost six hundred is because of the fact that we had to kind of make this. Um, fit in a console form factor, and secondly, um, have the features that a console, uh, you know, would. Um, mm -hmm. 
there's some if if you personally wanted to go other ways about this you could probably cut costs here and there um specifically with like the motherboard and the case and the power supply that we picked um but yeah. to open up we got an amd a8 6600k which is a very very good processor for the buck um one of the reasons why we didn't get a 70 uh, an athlon 7300k is the option for graphics if you wanted them um and honestly it's only another 30 bucks um these mm -hmm. chips do clock a bit better too from what i've heard um, mm -hmm. i haven't had too much experience with overclocking them myself um for the board we picked a gigabyte uh g a f two a eight eight x n wi fi mini um that was a mouthful <laughs> yeah well we we uh we'll include links in the in the comments and whatnot uh, so that way you don't have to be googling and replaying the video four hundred times um but yeah that board is around ninety nine bucks uh it's a pretty decent board f m two plus has what wi fi and built uh, wi fi and bluetooth built in um, it's dual band Wi-Fi too, which is really nice. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. So you know all those features you'd expect to find in a console. You know, you don't have to run the long Ethernet cord across the house. Um, Although technically it's the better way to do it, most people really yeah. don't care. Uh, yeah. We got eight gigs of PNY um, RAM at eighteen sixty six. Pretty good RAM for the price. It's seventy bucks on Amazon. Yeah, and you know what I like about this RAM, it's a little faster, so if you do, did want to use the APU graphics, we're not in this case, but if you did want to use them and save some money on the graphics card, this will give you a boost in, in graphics performance because the, it's a little faster than you know the standard and, 1600. And one of the nicer things about this compared to the Athlon is if you wanted to choose to not spend you know, roughly about 160 bucks on the graphics card, you don't have to. Um, it's actually... I mean, you're getting lesser performance, but if all you're trying to do is play some indie games or something like that, you know, the APU would be fine. Mm -hmm. um, or you wanted to buy a graphics card later, you couldn't technically afford it at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so for the hard drive, we went with our standard, the Western Digital Caviar Blue. That's pretty much in all of our builds because it's a really reliable drive and runs well. Um... You yeah, it's one Seagate. terabyte for sixty bucks. You really can't beat that. You're not. I mean, you could find a five hundred gig for like fifty, and it really doesn't make any sense. No. Um, for the graphics cards, we picked a an ASUS GeForce GTX six sixty. Um, it's a two GB card. It's overclocked to um, one point two megahertz. Uh, one point two gigahertz. gigahertz. Yeah, and I mean it's a direct CU card, so it'll have a little bit more uh headroom above that if you wanted to overclock it some more. Um, if you were more partial to EVGA, um, then there's also EVGA card about the same price. Um, I think that's a little bit higher clocked. I think it's a little bit more. Um, yeah. And then for the case, we have a Silverstone SG-05W Lite. Yeah. This particular model is white, but it also comes in black. We went with the white because, uh, I don't know, it just seemed elegant and nice for the living room. It, but, it just uh, seemed like it would fit in. Maybe we just like white. Um, I don't know. Black was about the same price. Um, yeah. For the power for supply, the... we went with a very specific power supply that will actually fit in this case. It's made by Silverstone, and actually some of the some of these cases comes in bundles with this power supply. It's a Silverstone 450 watt, um, 80 plus bronze certified power supply. Um, it's got two six pins. And one, I'm sorry, it's got one six pin and one six plus two pin, so yeah, a lot so, of I graphics mean, it'll, options. It'll power really any single graphic solution other than other than a, a 290x MSI twin frozer. Or, <laughs> I mean, you know, don't think you could put a 780 in here because that's not the point of a system like this. No. Um, there's no optical drive because who needs them? I mean, yeah. if you really but, want I mean, one, they're somebody's like 20 looking... bucks. For anybody who's looking to spend a little bit more money on a better graphics card or something, uh, that power supply will power probably power up to like a 760, maybe even a 770. Yeah, I'd, um, be, I'd be iffy on a 770. I wouldn't try to push it, especially with the kind of system that we're pushing here with the with the, the CPU and whatnot. I think that'd well, be the, kind of a waste. The, it, I mean, um, just for the record, um, so what the power supply can do. I mean... Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're worried about the CPU, you can switch that out too if you have more money, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously you can go to micro ATX uh, i5 and micro ATX, uh, I mean mini micro, I ATX. 
mini ITX i uh, i5 motherboard, you know, like a Z87 board, and a uh, and an i5. Um, but that's in a whole different price category. It's a whole different price range. But you know, just for those of you who are looking at like, what can I put my parts into? This case and power supply is a pretty good uh, combination, even for a little higher end builds. Yeah, I mean, so it comes up to around 640. Um, there's taxes in my state, so I'm not counting that. Um, if you live pretty much anywhere that isn't New Jersey or California, you'll probably won't get hit with tax. Uh, yeah, most of these parts are from Newing and Amazon. Amazon charges taxes in certain areas. Newing only charges taxes in states that it's located in. So... Um, NCIX does in states that they're in also, which is only California, I believe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's it comes up to six forty seven after tax for me. Uh, after at base total, you get about thirty five dollars back. So it comes yeah. up to around six twenty five. Um, that's a really great system for the price and for the the kind of applications that you'll be doing. Um, I mean, it's a six sixty, so you'd be getting medium and a bunch of games that you'd be playing. Um, Steam OS is also free. Um, you can pick that up from Steam and pop that onto a flash drive. Yeah, I mean, the installation is pretty straightforward. It could be easier, but, you know, it's a beta software, so... Um, if you want to top Windows and dual boot it, you could definitely do that, too. Um, if you have a key lying around from an old system or, you know, we went out and bought, bought one, that's, you know, that's your own thing. Uh, this will definitely run Windows quite well. Um... And I mean, this is this is a pretty solid build for the price that it's at. Yeah, I mean, as far as this is a entry level gaming PC, that's you know, um, price maybe a little bit above what it normally would be if it was a regular standard size. But this is an entry level gaming PC that you can also put in your living room, and it won't take up a lot of space. So, for the uh, I'm pretty happy with it for the form factor. Yeah, for you console gamers out there trying to get a taste of the Steam Box, or you know. Those of you just looking for to build your own Steam box to put in your living room, maybe stream some of the games you have on your desktop. Um, this is a, definitely the way to go. Um, so I think we're about done here. Thanks everybody for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.